In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment slash comedy podcast, uh, we answer fitness and health questions asked slash. by listeners just like you. But the way we open the episode is with, you know, just unscripted, uh, fun conversation. Oftentimes we talk about studies or our lives. Uh, we talk about whatever we want to talk about. Sometimes we mm. mention our sponsors. So the intro portion took about 36 minutes. After that, we answered fitness questions. So here's the breakdown of what went on in today's Mind Pump episode. We started by talking about my hair. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, my hair. I'm going to get it. Farrah Fawcett. Flow. I'm getting it cut finally, but right now it's got nothing in it, and it's fluffy. Yeah. Then we talk about CrossFit, more CrossFit craziness oh, going on oh, right oh. now. Then Justin talked about a new show on Netflix uh, called The Floor is Lava. That's right. It's based off of all of our favorites. You know you played this as a kid. We all did. Uh, then I talk about drones. Uh, apparently the military just bought a bunch of drones that can fit in your pocket. Mm. What could possibly go wrong there? Yeah, then, keep watching us. Then I talked about gut bacteria and how that may actually influence your eating habits. Your bacteria may be controlling what you crave. Are we people or bacteria? <laughs> then we talked about grass-fed versus grain-fed meat. Uh, you know, we've observed just on our own that when we eat a lot of meat, if it's grass-fed, we tend to feel better. Then when it's grain-fed, I've had a lot of people message us on this as well. Now, we do work with a company called ButcherBox that delivers all grass-fed meats to your door. So you don't have to go to the grocery store. You don't have to go do deal with that craziness right now. You can go on, sign up, and then get grass-fed meat sent to your door. Now, uh, because of everything that's been going on, the, the demand has been crazy for this company. They had to actually stop bringing people on for a little while, but they're open back up. So right now you can get on butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump um, and you will be able to get on their wait list and then they'll email you when it's time to uh, to take your order. And by the way, that link right there, if you use the code mind pump, you get a discount on your order. Then I talk about how uh, the way we dress got the stamp of approval from young people. Oh, thank God. Probably because we're sponsored by Viore. Now, Viore makes athleisure wear. Um, and they make great athleisure wear. Very comfortable, has a lifetime guarantee, and it looks really good. No joke. Go on their website. I'm not making this up. It's mm. the best looking athleisure wear, comfort wear uh, that you'll find anywhere. And of course, because you listen to Mind Pump, you get 25% off. That's huge. Stay cool, look cool. On all their stuff. So here's how you get the discount go to Viori Clothing. Dot com That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code that's listed on that page to get the 25% off. Then we got into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person says, look, I've heard that some people say it's bad to combine fat and carbs at the same time in a meal because it can cause insulin issues. Is this true? So we answer that for them. Next question, are trigger sessions useful when I'm trying to cut. Uh, if you're confused on what a trigger session is, listen to the episode. We explain it all. The next question, and what ways have you guys subliminally molded your children? That sounds kind of nefarious. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the final question, We're controlling them. what is the biggest lesson we've all learned from our fathers? So we talk about our dads uh, in that part of the episode. Also, uh, I got something special to announce right now. This is pretty cool. It's the biggest sale of the year for us. We never discount everything. Here it comes. Like we are right now. Right now, all individual MAPS programs, every single individual MAPS program is 40% off. All of them, 40% off. Use the code SUMMER PROGRAM. That's not all, though. Now, we have bundles. This is where we combine programs and uh, typically put them on sale anyway. So bundles typically discount the total price of the combined programs by about 30% off. You can get an additional 25% off right now as well with the code Summer Bundle. So here's the two codes Summer Program for 40% off all programs, Summer Bundle for 25% off all bundles. The site you go to to get all of this is mapsfitnessproducts.com. This will end at the end of this month. This is a once a year, massive, massive promotion. The sale will end again at the end of the month, uh, so go and check it out. Bees. What is going on with that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it's designed to be held like that. That's why. Look, it's just beep. Yeah. Beep, beep, You gotta have it down and then. Listen. Sh elbowed. I'm not afraid of having my face on camera. <laughs> 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 ding, ding. 
<laughs> Andrew needs to put a little of a sparkle. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Fantastic. It just goes down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sal rocking the Farrah uh, Fawcett. Uh, hey, I got some. Do. I got some DMs about um, about what about Jessica's post of you looking at um, the Bill of Rights. Yeah. A lot of people asking me if you're balding in the back. Nah, you know what that is. Just bad lighting? It's a little bit of hair loss, probably. <laughs> no, I have my hair uh, slicked back before. Not right now, yeah. as you could tell. It's all feathered out. Yeah, right first now. of all, let's yeah. just look at this. It looks like this glorious hair. You look like, a, glorious you look like I a, feel like I saw uh, a wind just going to come by. And you look like a, a drunk Robert De Niro. <laughs> why, wait, why drunk? <laughs> like why, you, why do I look drunk? Because he's like fucked up and didn't do his hair. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Does he, does he look like that? him out of a nap. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. It's because I'm getting a haircut later today. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I don't put anything in my hair so that they could... Are you going to tell the audience we have you going to a hairstylist? A hairstylist. Ooh. Not Supercuts. Wow. That's all right. That's, Super a, that's a big jump. Supercuts is still closed. For the price of five haircuts, I'm going to get one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I got yeah, you. but they shampoo you, I got right? you one Is on that... the black market this yeah, week. Stop. <laughs> yeah. That's not true. They actually use scissors. It's not just... <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. You know what I mean? Dude, do you, but seriously, though, like, uh, I mean, I'm, I was the 80s before with the slick back hair. I'm going back to the 70s now okay. with, the, with the fluffy. Yeah. Now, this was hair back in the day. Can you believe that? This is how people yeah. used to wear their hair. Mm-hmm. It, dudes just used to just do nothing. Let it you go. know, it's funny. You mentioned it. Like, I was thinking it'd be hilarious if, you know, somebody was like, oh, dude, let's, let's throw an 80s party. And it was like AD, like after death, you know, like it was all medieval. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you go to one of those? No. You have a lot of nerdy friends, yeah. dude. Yeah. Don't <laughs> lie. Yeah. No, I didn't. First of all, yeah, who, yes. Nobody actually dressed like that okay. in the 80s. You are you do LARPing stuff, too. <sighs> <laughs> so I feel like you'd go to a party I like that. I don't. No. You do have a LARPing stick. No. I, I mean, I've done it, but it's not like as a joke. You know what I mean? It was one way that I could. <laughs> I, was tr- I, was, I was trying to connect hey, with my brother. My that's like the, that's like like the guy nerd. who gets caught dressing up in his wife's clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's just a joke, honey. It's just a joke. No, it's, it's, it's funny. It's just a joke. I just want to see how it feels. It's funny. <laughs> Come on. Like, you guys haven't done that. Not, what? <laughs> yeah. Right? You no. haven't even just jousted because you're what? just like, dude, this would be hilarious. Oh, shit. I thought we were talking about something else. Oh, yeah. no, <laughs> For that, a second. That's your own bedroom. Dude, you want to know what's uh, really weird? Mm. Here, this is what's really weird. Mm. So mm. Uh, I don't remember the last time I bought a soda or a, you know, sh- just a drink like that, like a sugary drink or whatever. It wasn't a soda, but a Gatorade. Uh, whatever. Same category. I never do that. But for whatever reason, we're going for a walk. And, it's not you know, guilty yeah. as he feels right now. No, it's so funny. The one time we get, you know, so whatever, we run into somebody who listens to the show. Yeah. Oh, I love your show. Dude, that happens I got every a blue time. Gatorade in my head. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> every time I go out for ice cream or pizza or something, hey. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm mean? like, ah. Well, odds are a little Adam's higher. Adam's got a cigarette in the back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 100%. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that would be terrible. Yeah. No, Ooh, I, hey. I, no, I love meeting um, people who, you know, listen to the show. I just, you know, because. Yeah. You know, one of the things, the drawbacks of doing uh, this kind of communicating is that you don't get to see the people on the other side. So yeah. you don't really know if you're really helping anybody. Yeah. Well, that's what was so awesome about the live events when we were going around and meeting people. It was that like, was the big thing. Finally made it kind of real there for a minute. It you know? did. Yeah. It did. So it's like, you know, you get to see someone and then you get to hear them tell you uh, that, you know, the show has had a positive impact on their health and all that stuff. And it makes you feel really happy. I feel like yeah. she was a uh, a Doug fan, you know. She listened. Probably. She listened to Doug's private so. interview, which I, you know, which there's, there's like there's only like two downloads on that. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> no, that's not true. Hey, you know that's what? Not I, true. No, no, no. <laughs> it was like one of the f- top uh, episodes in his podcast. That's, I believe that's it, true. Yeah, yeah, I believe it was. I, I know think, it was. He I, told me that. Yeah, he said uh, Doug and I. I think were whooped on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not true. Yeah. That is true. Part. I believe that's actually you're true. You're stepping your lines here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, so. I don't know about the accuracy of that. I'll see yeah. analytics. That's yeah. right. Anytime, anytime I follow like Sal's interview, if it's somebody who he interviewed with first, so I say, "What did Sal get downloads yeah. wise?" Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know how he did. Yeah. <laughs> people want to hear how viral. Did I mean, go? people want to hear if I was going to say something crazy. You know what yeah, I mean? that's why. Like, That's just, probably why I get more downloads. Yeah. It's for, there's a 50-50 <laughs> oh, shot. He's yeah, he say, goes off, and we're not there to balance him out. Yeah, you know? Adam just goes I want to hear what Adam off. says when no one else stops him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen to that one. Dude, did you hear uh, more CrossFit news? Oh, bro. More CrossFit news. I, I purposely didn't read it because I know you guys like both read it, and I, wanna, I want you to tell me right now. Somebody, uh, Greg, sold CrossFit to someone else. He sold it. Yeah, he's That's done. Right. Done. Out. Finito. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing, I, though. Okay. Don't blame him. 
and and it's all over like Washington Post. I mean, all the big newspapers are writing about it. Yeah, but the, the new owner is what Eric Rosa. Is yeah. the new owner? Yeah, some tech guy, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Much so about he him. sold it before that other guy that was going to reveal this stuff. So that's okay. Now this is what, and this is what's funny is that, well, not funny, but this is what's crazy is that everybody is talking about his stupid George Floyd statement. But I think the real reason why he's out is because of that podcast. Right? Oh, and I, uh, the the information on that is more is more damning than the stupid than the stupid you know George Floyd the statement. Tweet, like yeah. that, the tweet was stupid. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. But I mean the the accusations that that guy was claiming uh, about him was yeah, way like, more damning. Yeah. Way well, more damning. Like kind of misconduct, you know, uh, sexual comments and. The, you know, way he, t he treated women or whatever, and it would, more p people were coming out about that. Yeah, so I think Sold I it. think that's so. The fact that he's getting out and he's getting out, and the majority of people, unless you listen to Mind Pump, are probably under the impression that it has everything to do with the George Floyd thing. I don't believe that for a second. No way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, yeah. do you do you think he sold it at a like a discount? You know what I mean? Do you think he got a good? Uh, uh, yeah, it's not going to be at its peak, uh, you know, value. I'm sure it went down substantially. I mean, who who wants to touch that brand right now? Not I, me. Well, I mean, if you take it over now, uh, because Greg left first, he apologized, and, that, and then he then he stepped down. Now he sold it. Do you go to Reebok and these other big sponsors and say, "Hey, do you want to?" Hey, can we renegotiate? Let's redo or, this yeah. because the guy that you guys were mad at is gone. Oh, do you really think it's just that? You think it's they were just uh, I'm over. I think so. I or think there's like a reason. Yeah, I think I think if you're a big company like Reebok and you decide to to move away from a partnership, I don't that, know. They, I mean, it's pretty quick. Like any accusation, you watch how like quickly they drop people. Just yeah, like but when you're when we're, when we're talking about millions of dollars and big and big partnerships like that, and this is my opinion, I'm in totally speculating right now, but I I would think that it's normally the the straw that breaks the camel's back. It's like I believe that Reebok like they probably saw things. Or well, I think they just may not have been it may not have been as financially beneficial for Reebok as they expected it to be. Maybe all uh, right. And so, and maybe, and, they, and then maybe the contract says you, you can't break it unless there's like something. Right. And so uh, I, I, I think that you know a statement. I mean, otherwise, are we getting that fucking weird? Yeah. That like, yep. Someone does a tweet, and then you you cancel a multi million dollar contract. I, we are. I mean, they've canceled like multi million dollar shows on you know like just one thing or a tweet or anything like that. It's, yeah. This it's is happening a, all over place. It's a strange. Well, that's. I mean, you know, canceling. Uh, you know. Kevin Spacey off of you know what you might call it because he can't. Well, that was, well, that's, that was yeah, that's a little bit different. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like those, that like stuff Roseanne happens. Bar and like all these that other stuff people. is yeah. is pretty normal to me. But I mean to to do a tweet like that and then all of a sudden you have a fallout with companies. I don't know. That well, seems... it's kind of weird right now, dude. Chris right now, Hardwick. people are afraid to say anything, anything for getting just this crazy backlash. Some of it's probably deserving some of it i don't think do you is, think this is a response. representation of the majority or do you think this is just a loud minority i think right it's now? a loud i think it's a small loud uh, group and i think a lot of sane people are i think a lot of sane people are afraid of saying anything and i think they're getting pushed to the point where so i feel like there's a lot of stupid sheep that are like jumping on board there's there's a loud minority there's a bunch of stupid scared sheep that are just falling in in order and then there's a bunch of the majority who just are like, I don't fucking want to get well, it. I, I don't want I'm not going to say shit. I don't want to be involved. They're going to start this. to get pushed because what ends up happening is if you push hard enough, uh, then you're going to get a, a reaction that's going to. People, here's the thing, you know, and this is the, the best time to speak the truth is exactly when um, you're afraid to speak the truth. That's when you need to. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know who has power over you, think to yourself who you're afraid of when you say something that isn't bad, isn't evil, isn't violent. Is just an opinion, um, especially if it's based in, in reason. If you're afraid of saying that kind of stuff, you know who you're. You know who's who's got the problem, and it, it's probably not you. It's the people who are, bah, you know, shut this person down or whatever. It's getting really, really strange. And uh, but I, I I think people are getting pushed to to come out the other end. Were you able to? I didn't find the dollar amount. Doug, can you see if they we can track that down? Does, it's not disclosed at this time. It's not disclosed. I don't no. think they they need to. Right? It's a private company. Mm -hmm. CrossFit? Does that mean they don't disclose it? I don't know if they... Ha I don't think they have to. I don't think they have to. I think if you're public, you have to. Well, yeah, no, if you're public, you have to. But if you're but private, it, I don't think you need to do it at I all. I still think you it would hmm. be it would be found out. There's no way that big of a deal goes down and people don't know. How, how much do you think? What do you think? You think it's in the hundreds? Dude, no. No, 100 million? 100 million? Mm. 
I mean, it's I don't a know. Big, I mean, they're flying private jets around. It's stuff. a big. It's a big brand. It's got a big. It's got a lot of weight behind it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I. You know what? I, I don't even have a guess, dude, because I'm not educated on any of their of the their company at all. Like, I don't. <laughs> it's, I know. I love reading like about <laughs> the CrossFit's not one I read about at all. No, I'm not okay. that interested. Well, they in only the, post it in their own journal. You know, yeah. Like, there's no no other articles well, are out I there mean, about them. It, yeah. I don't know. I'd be curious. So uh, where where would I don't I can't even tell you where most of their money is made. The education. Because it's not in the gyms, they get it. Well, I guess there is because they get affiliate. They get affiliate money for the gyms. Mm, whoa, what's that? What does that say? Its adherents have turned CrossFit into it. Okay, it says Colt, whose brand generates some four billion in annual revenue. Holy shit! And, and well, no. that's what the brand generates. That doesn't necessarily mean so. CrossFit Incorporated rakes in perhaps a hundred million, but that's 2015. So I think when they say four billion, they're probably referring to how much all the gyms that oh CrossFit yeah they don't, make. They don't, that's not what they're yeah, they're, they're saying included. CrossFit Inc. My and this is in 2015 r- raked in a hundred million. So well, it's got to be from 2015 to now they probably are oh, double. Oh, I don't think that. I think you don't that, think so. I think that that's close to where we were. They were peaking. Yeah, mm-hmm. you think you think they've continued to climb from 2015 to now uh, worldwide? Well, that's the thing is the international uh, yeah boxes I, I, were still rocking for them. So I don't know. Yeah, it's an inter- I don't know. It's interesting. I wonder. But like right now, given everything that's going on, they lost one of their biggest sponsors ever. I wonder if he took he just sold it fire sale. You know, sweetheart deal. Give me this and I'm out and you can take it over. Yeah, you know, it's still got some power behind it. Yeah. I mean, I what would you let me ask you guys a question because we know we've talked about uh, you know many times yeah. what we think uh, CrossFit did well, what they do bad. If you took over CrossFit right now, what would be some of the stuff that you would do? Would you change anything or would you keep it as as it is and try to renegotiate the contracts? I wouldn't want it. Yeah, <laughs> so fuck I'm, that brand. I, I would, <laughs> well, I've been waiting for this moment. No, I've been holding back. Wow. Oh, sorry, everybody, but it's true. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not uh, a big fan. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, my thing always, I've always liked uh, the sport of it, right? So I think it's, I think it's cool. Like it's, I, it, if it's on TV and I'm clicking through, it always, get, it always pulls me in for at least a few minutes to mm-hmm. watch, like to see some of the strength feats. I mean, I think it's uh, really fascinating to watch what some of these athletes can do. I mean, it, they're, they're specimens. Both the men and women are just amazing to mm. watch the, what the feats that they can do. So there's definitely a market for that. I don't think, that, I don't think that'll ever go away. I, I think it'll just become a, but more of a sport. I think it, I would gear it that way, the same way that we look at any other sport. And the boxes really are like training centers, you know, and the, for people that are really serious about getting into the sport of it. And I would quit trying to market it like a the a fitness modality for overall health. Although that's the opposite of their vision. It is. And his, you know, his vision was always the, to become the the way everybody works. I, I would am- I wonder what would happen if CrossFit took some of their money and then opened official CrossFit gyms. So, you know, you have all these affiliates, but then they'd have their own private, you know, gyms. And then in there, do kind of what we had talked about, which is, you know, okay, here's your general fitness CrossFit programming. Here's your gym, and then we have more, you know, uh, more advanced classes for people who want to compete, and just start to build it out kind of that way. Because do they even own? Does the CrossFit company even own their own boxes, or is it know. all? You're affiliate? looking at me to give you answers. I don't know. So like, I, I I'm know. all about the floor is lava. Like, let's just move what? every CrossFitter into that. Oh, uh, what's that? <laughs> what? Oh, dude, it's a new show on Netflix. It's oh. like, what is that? Oh, uh, it's just it, it's kind of a funny thing. It's almost like remember MXC, uh, like that show where they were like going on all these obstacles. Uh, yeah. It was a Japanese show. It was really oh, yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the one but, where they like run through the yeah, the they paper run through and... the thing, then they try and knock them off, yeah, and yeah. yeah, things spin. And so it's like it's kind of clever. I mean, my kids are really into it right now. I could see us doing it as a group, like. F- the, Four people have to kind of work their way around this room to find things to unlock obstacles to be able to get it uh, across all the way to the other side. So it's like physically challenging, but also you're trying to like, you know, solve this riddle of like how to like pass this room. It's a clever concept. It's actually pretty entertaining. Dude, did you guys play that game when you were a kid? Totally. Yeah. yeah. I love that game. Yeah, yeah. We're like okay, jumping from couch to couch. Yeah, yeah. the floor yeah. is lava. What a great. So I, wa- I, I was surfing through Netflix yesterday and I, I came across it and I thought the same thing. I'd watch it with my kids. Did you kids enjoy it? Oh, they loved it. Yeah. Yeah. 
that that's the cool part for me. It's like I could find things like they got into Ninja Warrior too. That stopped airing uh, these days, but like oh, that's not airing anymore. It, it, well, I haven't. Uh, maybe the seasons are you know they haven't like re upped the seasons, but uh, yeah, we we were really into that for a while. And there's this gym, and that's what got them into parkour. So I had them doing the parkour and everything at this local gymnastic uh, gym. And man, they were like having such a great time. It's it's so fun. Uh, Courtney got to do it with them and everything. I was about to do it, but uh, then COVID and all that shit. So, mm, yeah. yeah, I want to while here see Doug's putting it on right now. So basically, what they do, from what I understand, is they they set up a room to look like a room in the house. Yeah. And then you have to jump from, yeah. you know, hang from the chandelier or jump oh, on the they, couch. They totally designed it. Like, yeah. As a kid, how you would design it's it. It's all water, Probably. but, like, they have, like, spouts of lava. And like, they make it red. red. Red, yeah, colored water that just, like, splashes you. And, this is what I imagined, by the way, when I was a kid. Oh, exactly. Kid. That's why it's done. Yeah, that's, that's actually That's why fun. it's awesome. Yeah. This is exactly what I... Well, here, I, you want to hear something crazy? I got some crazy news for you guys. Let's hear it. You guys will love this. Justin loves this kind of stuff. Okay. So the U.S. Army awards uh, a a company to buy $20 million worth of, ready for this, pocket-sized drones. What? Yeah, these are, called the, these are called the Black Hornet 3 Personal Reconnaissance Systems. These drones weigh something. Are they armored? They're, um, I don't know if they're armored. <laughs> like, are they got little guns on them? That's you're, phase two. You're, 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 <laughs> like like nerdy, oh, no. Your nerdy mind going. Oh, man. Yeah. No, they're, they're very, very light. They're, it's just what it says, ready? So it's the size of a cell phone. So it's like this big. So this okay. is the drone. It says here that they're extremely light and nearly silent, and they can fly for up to 25 minutes. So you imagine them just launching like... 500 of them <laughs> everywhere. I feel like I saw that was like a Spider Man movie. What's gonna happen? Yeah, <laughs> What's gonna happen? actually, that was on a spy. Uh, I don't know, it was a Mysterio or whatever where the, the villain guy was, but like he basically like had all these drones that would collectively kind of organize and then would show uh, this kind of hologram. And so they would oh. project a hologram and it made it look like you know some big whatever monstrous thing was attacking the city. And I was like, oh, man, that's kind of an interesting well, I, idea. I thought I read in an article somewhere that there's a police department that's using it for patrolling. Google that for me, Doug. I know I, I could have sworn I came across. Well, so in Europe, I know this in, it, in Italy, they did this. So mm. when they had the whole country on lockdown, right, mm -hmm. they had a huge spike in, in, in COVID and there were a lot of deaths over there that cities in, in were monitoring the people with drones. Yeah. yeah. And then they put speakers on the drones so you could talk. Did you guys watch the videos of the Italian, some of these it's like like small town mayors yelling at the people who are walking around through the <laughs> Yeah, town? yeah, yeah. No, oh, no. bro. They're yelling if, at everybody. And you got to understand the context of the culture. Like, they tend to yell at each other a lot, you uh -huh. know, because I don't think a politician would get away with that shit here. Yeah. But the stuff they were saying was like, if you don't go back inside, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> this is a fucking <laughs> Look at what we did it in California. We did? Yeah. That's a, that's our, yeah, look at California uh, police used the drones to patrol coronavirus lockdown. Yep, yep. I don't wow. know. Well, I mean- we're going to have drone wars pretty soon where Bro. private private citizens are going to go up and try and take them out or whatever. What was that black... Wasn't there a Black Mirror episode where drones were like... They would find somebody and then they would just... Def they'd hit someone and detonate. And kill. Was that Black Mirror or was that something else? It uh, could have been. I think I know what you're talking about. It might have been a different movie. What was that... Mm. Uh, uh, that that um, 1980... The, the Orwell... Oh, uh, 1984. 1984. If you want to read a book that sounds like what's Explained happening... Explained it all. Then just read that book, uh, 1984, and you're gonna be like, oh, oh shit. shit, it's all coming to fruition. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it talks about you know kind of a dystopian uh, situation where they start tearing down statues and burning books, and, and everybody's being monitored. Everybody's being and, monitored, yeah. and it, little by little, it becomes this 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 crazy. Yeah. You know, and we're allowing all this shit because we're just enraged about other things. Are yeah. you still following what's going on with uh, what's her face who wrote the uh, J.K. Rowling's who wrote the the oh, ha and no. Hachette and all that? Are you no, following that still? No, yeah. Well, from what I read, so she did a whole statement. Apparently, she said something that offended the uh, LGBTQ community. Um, and, um, I forgot she, all the letters almost there. Yeah, there's, well, there's more, right? I think I have the most. <laughs> no, yeah, you covered it. And she, she got hammered by the actors in Harry Potter. She got hammered by the, but she didn't think she, she got support from other, 
other people. I read what she wrote. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I I, I can uh, understand what she's trying to communicate. I, you know, I understand what she's trying to say. It's weird. It's, like I said, it's a weird. It's one of those situations where you feel like, oh, what am I going to say if I say the wrong thing? I'm going to, you know, what I'm saying. weren't people Weren't people burning her books and then they they were threatening Hachette to not publish her next one that's I coming think, out or something? Like that? I think the publisher was oh. saying that they weren't going to. Oh, was it, that's I, what it was. But was if I'm not mistaken. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it's. In interesting. It's very, very interesting. You know, I, we should probably read her what she wrote so we could better represent kind of what she I said. I read it. But I, you can, I know, but I, I forgot. I oh, read it yeah. Too. I yeah forgot. You forgot after reading it? I, I know. Yeah. I've been reading a lot lately. Yeah. You can actually find it online. You can find what she wrote and you can kind of see for yourself and see if you agree with her standpoint or if you think that she was being, uh, you know, super insensitive or whatever. Uh, did anyway. you think so when you, do you remember when you first read it? I thought she, I thought she communicated pretty effectively what she was trying to say yeah. I, I, you know I didn't see what some people are saying necessarily I could see how some people could maybe take offense to what she's saying Cause what I try to do when I hear an argument is I try to empathize and try to understand where people are coming from even if I don't agree mm -hmm. and you know why it helps me not demonize the other person because mm -hmm. here's what happens the second you demonize the other person as being evil as being inhuman then you will no longer yeah. listen. You don't listen to anything that yeah. they say because they're evil. Right. But the reality is, most people are not. Most people are are are, are generally good. We all kind of want the same thing. We yeah. all want what's right for our kids. We want to be safe. We want to have. Be and everybody right. has buttons. You know, you press a button and it it, it it like the response like happens as a result. And so it's like okay, you know, trying to kind of step back and see like wh where those buttons were that got pushed and like what you know set these things off. It's interesting to me to kind of see where all that occurs and like what kind of language is used. It's really Arthur, like it, Arthur Brooks writes some really good articles about like love your enemies. And one of the, one of the things he says is try to understand uh, where they're coming from, even if you don't agree. Yeah. You know, rather than assuming they're crazy or evil, where are they coming? Even if you disagree, where are they coming from? Because it'll help you yeah. communicate and, and understand. Otherwise, we're just going to all we're going to do is Well, fight. it's a lot like what, you know, when you're talking to your kids. It's like you want to find out, uh, you know, what, what, what was sort of their thought process with certain things and why they think that way and who they're talking to. And so it's all that kind of stuff. I'm applying the same principles to talking to anybody else who has a difference of well, opinion. Well, let me ask you guys a question. Has this ever happened to you where your significant other or maybe you have a friend and they do or say something and you are like deeply offended or shocked or angry, but then because you have a history with them, you try to talk to them and you try to understand and it ends up turning out that they didn't mean what you thought or right. from where they're coming from, you could say, okay, I, I can kind of, and then you're, you're cool. Could you imagine if instead of that, you're like, that person's evil yeah. and you'll never get to that point. You'll never get to the point. Well, where not only listen. that, but you know, I had this conversation, this, our conversation, my, when I went, uh, when I talked to Connor, uh, last week went down this, this rabbit hole and you know, I, I told him that if some, if somebody does something or says something, not physically harming like words, right. Saying something to you, and and it, and it hurts your feelings, or it makes you angry, and it enrages you. That has nothing to do with them. That has every. It's a reflection of yourself, and that's really fucking hard for people to swallow. It's your feeling. It, it's my feelings. Yeah. You have no. You have no control of them. So you should be able to say the most evil, awful things to me, and I should be able to control that. And if I can't, that is a direct reflection of something going on inside of me that I would allow your whatever to, your actions to affect my emotions i'm giving my power away right and so if there if i ever catch myself in a moment where i'm going you, i can't believe you said that or this that like you got to pull yourself out of that like, why am i giving this person right so much why, power? why am i giving why am i giving them so much power to allow them to change my emotional state that's me man and that's they're all allowed me. to have a different opinion Right. Everybody has different opinions and it's not like evil. It's just like a matter of like where we're all coming from and what we're trying to understand. Like yeah. I can have an opinion, you can have an opinion. Let's talk about it yeah. and where you formed it. Well, sometimes opinions can be evil. Uh, I mean, sure. to, be, to be clear, but I think what you're saying is generally, you know, tends to be true. Is, is, you, and you're right. What you're saying, Adam, is, is a very empowering statement it's not a disempowering one that's a very stoic uh philosophy which is you know that the it's like uh, you know how they say there's power in forgiveness like where you where you, if you forgive someone by the way forgiving someone doesn't mean that you'll go back like let's say you have a friend or you you had a boyfriend or girlfriend that did something that cheated on you yeah it doesn't mean terrible. you agree with them it doesn't mean you're going to get back with them but forgiving them means you've given up you 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 take back the power because actively hating them 
actively being angry and and, and it only hurts that you. It only hurts you. Yeah, it's, I know people like this. I have people like this in my family where they they you know, and this is part of the old school Sicilian culture. They will hold a grudge for decades. Mm -hmm. You know, I have family members that didn't talk to, that don't talk to other family members, haven't talked to them since like 1983 over one thing. So frustrating. I have family members like that too. Yeah. And it's like, you're just, that's, you're hurting yourself, you know, and okay, fine. You don't need to talk to them, but you can, they're still harboring this anger and this hatred. And it's like, what's that doing for you besides poisoning you? Yeah. It's cancerous. Besides doing that. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about, let's talk about fitness again. (laughs) Let's talk about health and fitness. (laughs) Cool. Uh, Yeah. Hey, another study came out that shows that your gut bacteria really can strongly influence your cravings. They're showing more and more studies that how your, that, cause, and this is a weird concept to understand, Mm. but your, we've talked about this before, you have more bacteria cells in and on your body than you actually have human cells. Yeah. And if you think that bacteria, just like any living thing, is always trying yeah. to... And they're influencing you. Yes. if They're always trying to maintain their survival, right? Bacteria might not be intelligent, but they've evolved to try to live. So let's say you have bacteria that thrive off of sugar, yeah. lots of sugar. Then they have evolved to, to have mechanisms to, to influence their host to crave sugar. So your gut bacteria may actually be influencing you to eat certain things, among other things. Well, don't don't you believe this is connected? Remember when I shared, uh, I think this was back when I was competing, or maybe I shared it afterwards about when I was, uh, how I did a show where I did like no bars, no shakes, all whole foods, and Mm -hmm. then then I did shows where I like integrated bars and things like that. And I always remembered like when I cut out like protein bars for a long period of time, and then I reintroduced them. The first like couple were like, Ugh. I didn't even like them. But then after about two or three of them, all of a sudden I, I went from not liking them to, okay, they taste good, and then craving them, and then like wanting two or three of them in a day. I wonder if that is is similar to that. Like that has something to do with why that happens. It's like, probably part of it, I would assume. Because right? like, it, it, ne- it, was, it, was, it was weird to me to feel that way, to, to go, oh, I, I thought I loved these bars, but because I'd taken them out of, my, uh, out of my diet for so long, my body got used to not having it. Then I introduced them again, and I'm like, and I remember, I always remember like getting like, oh, this must be a bad box, or this, was, mm. this is stale or older or something. And no, it's not that. It's just that I hadn't had them in a while. I wasn't used to them. After I had two or three of them again, then all of a sudden I found myself craving them, wanting two, three in a day. Well, if you've ever gone on a stint of eating, uh, you know, quote unquote, unhealthy food, you ever notice how the more you have, the more you want, and then the more you have, and then the more you want, it kind of self, you know, starts to feed itself. I think we've all, you know, kind of experienced that where we start to crave more and more from. It's really weird. And, you know, they, there are bacteria that will influence. We know this in animals and in some creatures. Like there's a, there's a, there's a parasitic host that will infect an insect and it'll it'll take almost take over its mind, make yeah. the insect crawl to the top of a tree, mm-hmm. and present itself to be eaten by a Grasshoppers bird. Grasshoppers and slugs. Yeah, so that the bird then gets the parasite. Have you seen the one with the snails, where it like uh, it, it basically the parasite makes its way up into its eyes, and it like starts doing all these weird <laughs> signals with its eyes to get birds to get to the it. birds to come down and eat it. So nature is is crazy. Yeah, there's one. There's another one that if a mouse or rodent gets infected with it, it makes the mouse or rodent be attracted to the. Sm- smell of like cat urine yes like it's tr- like like it's making the host get itself right. eaten so that it can move so it gets the- closer and closer to where the cat just like can murder it dude yeah. how, how crazy is that isn't <laughs> yeah. that gross i don't know if it's crazier that, that that happens or that we actually have the ability to to figure that out right yeah. that, that to me is crazy that we yeah. have the science to, to piece that together yeah, it's, cr- <laughs> it's it's so insane hey have we talked about the 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 wait list on butcher box did we mention this already doug yeah, the, yeah, we, yeah. They, they, the last episode we brought, or one of the last episodes we brought it up that they, I mean, first of all, they we weren't advertising for a while from them, not because they no longer were a sponsor, but just because they couldn't take any more or, orders. Too popular, too yeah. much demand. Oh, yeah. So it was, yeah, they, but they, they are now opening up and they're taking people off the wait list. So if you're somebody who maybe tried a month or two ago when COVID first hit, like probably everybody did, mm-hmm. uh, and you're interested in it, uh, now's the time to do it. And, you know, even if you don't, you can't get it right away, get on the wait list because it is it's become that high of demand to be able to get on there and it's i tell you what i was so much more convenient i cook all did i tell you guys about um so katrina did the the ribs yeah you said in the in the the insta pot pot. yeah holy smokes so i ordered some because jessica wants to do the same thing she listened to the episode 
It was so good, yeah. and I can't believe. I, I mean, you cooked the ribs like in thirty minutes, thirty or forty-five minutes. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. So, have you guys have you tried the tri-tip from Butcher Box? Mm -hmm. I haven't it's, tried the tri-tip yet. No, uh, that's my favorite. Ribeye was the one I'm usually doing. Yeah. No, no, no. Tri-tip's my favorite now. Sweet. Yeah, it's one of my. And so, uh, have you guys noticed this? I've done this now several times. Where, and, and typically, it's if we eat a, a lot of meat, we run out of our Butcher Box order, so I have to wait uh -huh. like a week or two before I get a new one. Have you guys noticed a difference when you eat a, like? Because I eat a lot of meat typically. I mean, I'll eat red meat most times, most days, once, sometimes twice a day, maybe even three times a day if I'm really pushing it or whatever. Have you noticed a difference when you eat grain fed versus grass fed in terms of how you feel? Um. Yeah. I mean, like one being a little bit more sluggish yes. is what you're kind of alluding to. Yeah. I I have felt that and like have been felt like my energy is a bit better. Yes. Yeah. Because I'll do like there'll be a week or two where let's say we ate let's say we had family over so we ended up going through our butcher box order, mm -hmm. then we'll we'll have to go to Safeway or whatever and get the normal uh, you know grain fed stuff which you know, I love the taste of it of course but we get a bunch of grain fed meat then I'll eat that for a week or two. And I'm starting to notice a pretty clear difference in my I in only, how I feel in my gut health. As well. I only notice it when I go like so. This how I do it is I try and if I'm at home cooking, I try and always do my butcher box. I always try and do the grass fed. But when I go out to a restaurant, that's kind of like when I say uh, obviously I'm not going to be that picky where it's like oh I won't eat here unless mm -hmm. it's fucking grass fed. <laughs> I'm definitely not like that. Especially since I do enjoy a grain fed steak every mm -hmm. now. I mean it's. The steak is much. There are more restaurants out there offering it, which is interesting. They, they do. There are more, but I'm not that picky. Where yeah. and, and that's the way I look at it is like, oh, every once in a while I'll enjoy a nice grain fed steak. Mm -hmm. And when I do it just uh, intermittently like that, it doesn't bother me. But if for some reason, like, and this was a while back when we weren't getting the butcher box more regularly, is I would go and do what you just said is we'd get to order a bunch of Safeway steaks. And I find if I have two or three meals and that, that's when I really notice it. I just feel like I'm a little lethargic. I feel like it doesn't digest as quickly and as easily. Okay, like, so it's yeah. not just me then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed that. I absolutely do. So. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't yeah. think it would have that that you know that much of an effect, but I mean, apparently do it have, does. Do you have a favorite uh, like flavoring or rub or uh, uh, what do you call that where you put it in the juices? Yeah, uh, <laughs> marinade. <laughs> marinade. Thank you. Marinade. <laughs> it was, I couldn't think of the word. I'm like it's the juices. Yeah. 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 Um, you know yeah, what? You have a favorite. Way you rub yeah. it? Tell them. I, okay, tell, tell, tell them your favorite way. <laughs> underhand, <laughs> yeah. underhand rub. <laughs> Jessica, um, <laughs> Jessica does a very plain, clean. You know, she'll put a lot of salt on it, let it sit out, uh, get to room temperature. Um, sometimes she'll add a little bit of uh, powdered garlic mm -hmm. on it. Um, but we like to, you know, there's that what that Santa Maria seasoning, yeah, which is pretty yeah, good yeah, too. Yeah, that's good. But sometimes I like it just. That's great on tri tip. Like, yeah, sometimes I like plain, just salt, just salt and a good piece of meat yeah to me sometimes is the best yeah i want you guys to try this one it's like a coffee grounds with a, like a garlic and the salt anything and to get more caffeine huh just <laughs> yes. you, you call me out yes. you call me out hey, it's fantastic it's, i don't know what you, you because of the acid or like it, <laughs> whatever it just blends so well really yeah Tra it's Tra so good trigger has a rub like that yeah so oh, you do fantastic. coffee grounds with salt and everything else yeah or? yeah Really? And garlic and a little bit of onion. Yeah. Really? Good. Yeah. Really. All right. Good. I'll, give, I'll give that a shot. Yeah, see, yeah. see how that is. Hey, uh, I got the, the stamp of approval from a teenager on, uh, on our style. Oh, well, speaking wait, of, of, of our style and stamp of approval. Yeah. First of all, who's, wait, wait, tell me who it is. Yeah, well, like, hold we on a second. Verify this. I've had, I've had this happen now a couple times. I've had, I had one of my younger cousins who was 17 ask me where I got my sweats from and said that, that she really liked them. And she'd like to, you know, what company is that? Yeah. And then my son said the same thing, and he wants uh, Viore sweats ah, now. Nice. So I got the stamp of, a, you know, younger stamp of approval, because apparently they know what's cool. The cool kids yeah. like it. So speaking of approval, and I haven't had a chance to tell you guys this, so since you brought that up, I thought you were going this direction. Uh, we, we reached out, I think, a month or so ago. So our marketing team uh, has been trying to get, you know, Sal, Justin, and I to dress better. <laughs> for quite some time and they're always harping us about being you know I, we, we record our podcast like i don't give a shit about how i'm dressed right now actually you can watch on if you're you if I'm you're watching wearing on you, viore shorts if you're watching on youtube right now because we record all these podcasts you know exactly what adam's talking yeah. about yeah. <laughs> yeah, you so, can see right now <laughs> yes yeah, so so anyways we but uh, for all of our marketing material that goes out for maps fitness products you know we're trying to brand that like a separate company uh they're always telling us that we need to have this uniform and i just 
I and, and I've been fighting them forever because they want to dress us, and I just I don't like that. I want to dress yeah. myself. I've dressed myself my whole life. I feel like I've done a decent job. I don't <laughs> especially need... from people who don't have any style. Yes, exactly. That especially is from, the worst. Especially for my marketing team, who I don't I see yeah. the way they dress every day, right. and I am not interested in them dressing me. So, <laughs> yeah. so I I finally caved. They're and still said, wearing like I big said, dog okay, here's shirts. the deal. I I'm going to try and see if I can work out a deal with Viore where they will actually brand some of their uh, some of their joggers, the stuff that we already wear and we love their shirts put and mind then, pump on it. And put mind pump on it. And that's approved. It's done. So, so we're gonna have we yes. so we're gonna have branded apparel for ourselves. Yes. Oh. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right. Because I mean, this is a cool brand. Like I mean it's verified. One hundred percent. So we yeah. So we uh we make our marketing team happy and then we still get to continue to wear our Viore swag, which we all like so much, and uh, approved by teenagers, obviously. <laughs> good, good job, Adam. I'm so happy. I'm, I'm so happy we made you head of style of the company. You've really done a great yeah, job for us. Yeah, I appreciate. It. Thank God. If it was you, we'd be sponsored by Skechers. Hey, hey I don't want. I don't want. Hey, I don't want to. I don't want to lead anything I'm not good at. Yeah. Uh, Skechers and Argyle socks. Yeah, don't put me in charge it's of style or organization. We'll fail yeah. every time. Oh, also, um, dude, the summer sale is going off. The biggest sale of the year massive we, we never uh discount like this maybe once a year most uh and so this is a massive sale for us to discount all programs and bundles uh so bundles are already massively discounted but to discount them on top of that so this is a huge sale well for we us. get a lot of messages from people saying that they're now in some places able to go work out in their gyms again mm -hmm. um so people are like oh my gosh my gyms are open again you know can i which program should i do right. and little by little these emails have been starting to pile up um so it's really really good timing um i, I think for this for this particular well, sale. but in, it is the biggest one that we in did. addition to that too i know that uh we all worked on what last week or the week before piecing together modifications for all the programs i know that will be coming down the pipeline i don't know when that'll be released that's true yes I, i'm glad you mentioned that so mm. all the programs eventually are going to have modifications free uh, for people who only have access to uh, nor normally equipped dumbbells home gyms. Dumbbells or just barbells. Yeah, yeah we got options for Dumbbells you. or dumbbells and barbells. You're actually right. going to get two versions of a mod with each program. So let's say you enroll in a, a program like MAPS Aesthetic. Um, there are some machines and stuff in there because it's an advanced kind of bodybuilder program. But we're going to send mods out. So if you have a home gym or just dumbbells, you can still follow the programming as it's written with the replacements uh, for that. But yeah, um, so bundles already are discounted, typically around 30% off. So we've added an additional 25% off to that. And then the programs, individual programs are all 40% uh, percent off. And I think there's two codes for each, right? So for the programs, it's summer program. And then for the bundles, the code is summer bundle. First question is from Ninja Master 166 oh, This guy's cool, I can tell. One of Justin's friends. <laughs> yeah, my guy. I have heard some people say that it is bad to combine fats and carbs together because it can lead to insulin resistance and more fat gain. Is there any truth to this, or is it better to just focus on eating healthy foods? So this, the opposite is true yeah, here. This, actually, this can be very, very true. So if what you're eating is too many calories, don't combine fats, proteins, or carbs. <laughs> yeah. Don't have anything at all because yeah. you'll eat too yeah. much of it. So you know what's funny about this is I've heard people say this yeah. um, that you know don't combine this and that and the other. The only long-term health practices that that really communicate this are Ayurvedic medicine. Sometimes they'll communicate not combining certain foods. Um, Chinese medicine will do the same thing. Now they don't say fat gain or insulin resistance. They use their terminology, which you know there's there I forgot what they use in Ayurvedic medicine. I can't remember the names of them. Um, there's like different forms of energy. I can't remember what they are. You know, Chinese medicine, they'll talk about yin and yang in the body. So I'm sure there's some truth to combinations in regards to energy levels and digestion in particular, but this is a very individual thing. This is not a general statement that those, 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 you know, those forms of yeah. medicines tend to make. Well, the is it more like hot, cold, like, you know, in terms of spices and like what it yeah, I, I don't want to represent them because I don't know them I well enough. Know, but yeah. I have heard them say, you know, they'll they'll, and I know this because I've worked with them, not personally, but I've worked with them with clients where a client will seek out alternative medicine, <laughs> then they'll come to me and say, oh, my practitioner said to not eat, you know, these foods or combine these foods, and 
you know, these are these are long traditions, so I'm sure there's some truth to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But not this. This this I don't I don't necessarily see. Being well, not an only issue. that, but this is the opposite. It's the opposite of this is true. It, you, if you combine a carbohydrate with a fat, you actually lower the glycemic index on the on the carbohydrate. Yeah, that's true. Huh? So it spikes it, sugar less. Okay. Yes, it spikes yeah. sugar less. So the the opposite is true. Eating carbohydrate all by itself will actually will spike your blood sugar level mm -hmm. faster than if you actually pair it with a fat or a protein. Yeah. So that's like, uh, and I remember uh, playing with this like when we when I was trying to like uh, time like a pump or time like the way I looked on stage, you know, if I just had like a carb by itself, I would fill up really quick, but then I would flatten back out really really quick also. And by me actually eating it or parent, remember I told you guys like I I pieced together like the chicken, the avocado, and oh, the rice right. was like this. And if I pulled the avocado out of it, as crazy as may, it changed the way I would look on your stage. muscles will would look less full. Yeah, they would they would hmm. they, what they would do is it would it would they would get filled up, but then they would deflate really quick. Interesting. Where when I would add a fat into the meal, it would actually fill up slower, but then would maintain that for a little bit longer and then come back down. So I, it made it easier for me to time a look on stage. Now that for me, that's what that's for. It has nothing to do mm. with me gaining body fat or not. Like, but that's, we, I would manipulate adding fats with carbohydrates to slow down the digestive process. So it would fill, fill me in at a slower rate instead of really fast and then leave really fast. Yeah. On the list of priorities, uh, yeah, this is splitting hairs. Yeah. This is like somewhere near number 2000. I would say I, I wouldn't worry too much <laughs> about this. You know what you should pay attention to? Yeah. You should pay attention to combining foods and your digestion. Now I've heard this from people where they'll say, yeah. if I combine these kinds of foods, um, I start to get digestive issues. You should pay attention to that, but that's very individual. Uh, that's typically nothing general that you can apply. Yeah, that's more like that. you combining two foods that you might be slightly intolerant to. Right, and mm -hmm. now you've got a bigger and now you've got to figure out which one it was and yeah, do your homework. So on. I so I noticed this with like if I go have like a cheeseburger, I, I noticed that the the combination oh, the of the cheese and the, and the gluten together is like the perfect storm for me to, to be bloated and digestive issues mm -hmm. afterwards. If I get rid of the bun and I have just like a, a like a, a burger and cheese, I'm mm -hmm. okay. If I just have a hamburger, I'm less as I'm not as bad. So it's the combination of me doing the gluten and the dairy in one meal that just hammer and then you throw in some fries too, a bunch of carbs and extra calories. It's just like the perfect storm for me to feel absolutely bloated and terrible afterwards. So that, but that's individual. That's mm -hmm. me, right? I know that my body is affected that way by those foods, and my body seems to handle them by themselves in smaller doses. I had, you know, last night I was had a bowl. By the way, I had the new bowl of uh, peanut butter magic spoon. I know it's oh, not a commercial for asshole. them today, but by yeah. the way, that was phenomenal. And I had it with I had it with whole milk, and I normally don't do that, but just whole milk by itself doesn't really bother me that much. But if I have, you know, whole milk and then I also have cheese later on and then I have ice cream or something, it's like, then it's just too much. Is that so, why you were blasting us earlier and before the podcast started? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to call you out on that. He's, uh, he's doing some trumpet. Just no, good, do trumpet music. Look, over. Here, there, don't he, do that. Katrina still doesn't think I Here that you, he, mm. Katrina, he farts all mm. the time. I think he saves it for us because he won't fart We'll start it. videoing it. There's two uh, main things you could do to fight or to prevent uh, insulin resistance. The two biggest things you can do are not overeat, and then here's the second one, build muscle. Muscle is incredibly protective in this uh, particular case because muscle um, helps soak up and absorb glycogen and it helps control blood sugar. People with more muscle are far less likely to have insulin resistance than people with less muscle. Mm -hmm. um, so those two things are the things you should focus on and not really food combinations. <clears throat> Next question is from M. Perks. Are trigger sessions useful during a cut? Oh, trigger sessions are useful. Just okay. Almost anything. You should lift weights and try to build muscle while you're when you're cutting or when you're bulking. Now, why? Okay, obviously for bulking, you want to try and build muscle because that's part of the goal. But why should you try to build muscle when you're trying to cut? Muscle preservation. Yeah, yes, because cutting typically results in or can result in the body reducing muscle to try to slow its own metabolism down. This is one of the biggest pitfalls to dieting or cutting is you end up with a slower metabolism than you went in with and now maintaining it is so difficult. So real quick trigger sessions, just for people who don't know what those are. A trigger session is a very light, low intensity, short 10 minute you know, session where you're pumping the muscle um, maybe two or three times a day. On days, you're not doing a normal workout. These are on off days. Now, by themselves, they don't really build a ton of muscle, but when you add them to your normal workouts, 
it's like a little bit of a, a turbocharger. So yeah, during a cut, oh my gosh, sugar sessions are are extremely important. I actually important. found them more, even more beneficial during this time. So when we when I was getting ready for shows, I was that's the most I ever was doing trigger sessions mm. when I was competing. Like I was constantly doing that, and I felt that that was one of the game changers for me to holding on to as much. That's one of the hardest things. One of the hardest things to do is to cut, you know, reduce your calories, increase movement, add cardio, mm -hmm. and then also think you're going to hang on to all that muscle that right. you've worked so hard to build. And obviously, uh, when you're at the competitive level, it's very important that you maintain that. Otherwise, why are you putting all this work in to build that muscle in the off season? So uh, I really felt that that contributed. And I had I had shows where I didn't, and I had shows I did, and I felt when I was really consistent with it, um, I held on to the most muscle when I was cutting. And it's really hard to do that. It's really hard to keep your muscle. One of the best things you can do is constantly being sending, sending a signal that your body needs it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what the trigger session is. Without all the extra damage, Right, you're just sending that signal of hey, we need this, we need this to stay around. We're using it a lot, we're using it a lot. That's kind of what you're doing, totally. it's just a low level version. Yeah, of it. it's almost therapeutic too, in its own right. Like, a, in, in terms of like feeling like I've, I'm recovering uh, as well. So, like, I, I tend to, to focus on it a lot more if I'm in a cut, just mainly because it's something that I'm trying to, to maintain. Uh, you know, this momentum and this energy of adding like extra movement and extra uh, calorie expenditure. So that's something I, I'm paying attention to, like my Fitbit, my step count and all that stuff. But I'm also just trying to make sure my muscles are getting that stimulus uh, throughout this whole thing. So I don't, yeah, I don't lose my muscle. Totally. That's another thing that I really loved about it was when I'm in a cut, I'm low calorie for long periods of time and I get tired. Yeah. I wanted. I don't want to do anything. It's an energizer. It is a great energizer. I mean, that mm -hmm. was one of the things that I, I really also enjoyed. Just a sec added benefit that I wasn't thinking about when I started to incorporate them is, you know, I'd be tired from a, a day already, and I'm and I've been I sat down on the couch for a while, and I don't really want to move, and I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to do a trigger session, you know, sometime in the next hour or two, and I like, I just pop up, and that was back when I used to just keep it on my my door, my closet door near my living room, and I'd hop up, just do a little 10, 10 12 minute you know, trigger session. And all of a sudden I'd be re-energized. I'd Completely. be now motivated to move around, go for a walk or do something because I got up and did that. So that was, and then that just adds to your cut. You're, you're burning more calories. You're moving more the active recovery portion of it. So I actually find the most benefit during a cut. Oh, than, than any yeah. Instead of doing 30 minutes of stationary cardio or not stationary, but, uh, uh you know, uh, steady state cardio, do three 10 minute trigger sessions throughout the day. Mm -hmm. It's going to actually do a better job at burning body fat and preserving muscle. Trigger sessions are found in MAPS Anabolic, uh, by the way, if people are looking for the program that has that specific technique. And also um, that program and all of our programs uh, are actually 40% off right now. I want to make sure I mention that uh, on the show. 40% off all of them, but you have to use the code Summer program, so you can get any individual program for. Well, for the that, bundles that are also twenty five percent. Bundles are twenty five. Which are already discounted. This it's, this is the biggest sale we've ran all year. That's it, yeah. totally. And that code is Summer Bundle. So if you want to get twenty five percent off the already discounted bundle, use that code. Next question is from JJ Boogie sixty four. In what ways have you or do you? Sublim subliminally mold your children. What does that mean, subliminally? <laughs> oh, I know. I hypnotize them. No, I know uh, what it before means. Because I totally do this. Uh, you, yeah. So, I mean, like, I've been telling, I think I've shared it on the podcast already, like the whole basketball thing. Uh, right? just, it's uh, always on in the background. Yeah. 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 And so I think that's what he means by subliminally. I'm not like forcing my son to watch it. It's just playing in the background. That's you how know? you throw, that's how uh, you throw away the garbage. Yeah. I did that with Star Wars <laughs> yes. and with music all the time. Like, uh, like I had mentioned this, I found those, um, those like nursery kind of like chimes of ACDC, Metallica. Yeah, the lullabies. And, yeah, the lullabies. Yeah. And like, so, and and that sort of groomed them into then I started to buy them CDs of like all these like rock bands that are just like staples. You have to, you know, have this in your collection of like Led Zeppelins and like all these <laughs> bands. So yeah, I do that all the time. That's so funny. Have you, so there was this, this reminds me of a video, a few videos I've seen of something similar where there's like a little, little baby that won't eat. So the, the, the mom or dad is like trying to give their kid like, mashed vegetables or something the kids like no yeah so then they take a stuffy or a doll and they like slap the doll a bunch of times and it oh they pretend to feed the doll the doll says no then they beat the doll <laughs> then they go give the food to the kid and the kid eats the food <laughs> I was like, oh my God. It's like an interrogation. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. bad. So, it's so, because they'll go to, they'll do it to the doll. The doll goes, yeah. no, just like yeah. the kid did. And then they'll hit the doll. <laughs> oh my they God. set the doll on fire. Yeah. yeah. And then they go, <laughs> give the, 
Oh. And they give the food to the kid. The kid eats it all. I'll like, eat oh. the broccoli. Oh, oh my god! When I think of this, wow. in, in terms of subliminal, I think of just my own actions. You know, when I, especially when I'm around my kids, I try to be aware of how I treat my wife in front of them. I try to be aware of how I react. Um, if I, if I, if I'm angry, if I'm happy, um, if I, if we're driving and let's say we drive by, uh, some, like a homeless encampment, like I, I try to be aware of what I'm going to say, yeah. um, because I, you know, I want empathetic, loving, you know, I want my kids to grow up to be good people. So, okay, what am I going to say as we drive by this to, to show them that this is the, you know, that this is how you should be around these kinds of things. And so that's, that's what I try to think of. I, I know one time I, I lost my temper. This is when, when, when uh, my, my kids were young and this is that story when the kid threw the basketball at my car while I was driving by. Yeah. And uh, I got so mad and I pulled back, you know, I, I turned around the kid, the kid and his friends ran inside the house and I pulled their basketball hoop down and threw, you know, threw it or whatever. And then I remember as I was leaving, my son, you know, had a conversation with him. He was real young, and he's like, "Why'd you do that?" You know, that was worse. I remember thinking to myself, like, "What a bad example I just gave my kids of how you should act yeah. in a situation like that." So I think that's the most important thing. There's, a, it's even more subtle. I do things like, uh, so right now, Katrina and I, we made a pact before we even had Max, like the things that we wanted to be careful of our own behaviors. Um, and the phone was a big thing for me oh, yeah. because mm -hmm. that's that's a, a newer thing, right? Like I didn't have that 20 years ago where I'd be on a cell phone all the time where I'm literally on a cell phone all the time. And it is. It's a, it's a real temptation for me to want to grab it um, for a lot of reasons. And it's very easy for me to justify it. I'm, I'm, you know, we're in the middle of building a business that we all love and are passionate about it and we enjoy. And like, so yeah, I, I always want to check emails and respond back to people and and to do those things because I do I in thir I really enjoy it and it's also benefiting the company building right so it's really tough for me to shut that down but I, I have to make a point to do that because I do not uh, want my son to get used to seeing his father on staring at a screen because yeah. that becomes normal that's if that, such a tough one man it is mm -hmm. a tough one but Katrina because Katrina and I both have made a, a such a great pack about it that if the, either partner does it we we always like little subtle comment you know. Like, oh, daddy's on his phone after five right now. Oh, you know, yeah. like, and then, like, right away, like, if I get, I like, phone, I drop it like it's hot lava, you know, right away, because I'm like, that's something that's important to me. And I do the same thing to her, you know, she gets stuff where she's communicating maybe with family about some weekend thing we're about to do. And, but if we're engaging with him and he's sitting in front of us, that's like, for us, that's like a big no no. And, you know, I don't, I know we're not 100% perfect and we won't ever, but the fact that I think that we were, we're conscious of it and we were making an effort, I hope makes a difference for when that becomes something that he's interested in, that he doesn't connect like, oh, mommy and daddy are always on their That's phone. That's the challenge of, of now. You know, mm -hmm. when we were kids, it was processed foods, which now we're seeing the ramifications. The challenge of now is electronics. And uh, I see a clear difference in my kids when I, when I, when I monitor it. Versus when I don't, they're totally different people. So uh, yeah. I think that's a good thing. I've tried to, yeah, address this by starting to really model of being outside more and doing things and building things and being active and climbing and walking and hiking, all that kind of stuff. And like, you know, just making that opportunity uh, there and available so that they, you know, th they're just in that environment more than I am in the house. And then there's nothing but electronics just because it's, it is so hard. It's so hard to address that when uh, everybody's like sitting down. You just get like drawn to it, and you mm -hmm. want to know. Well, well, somebody like I'm important. I got emails. I got things, and then the, well, like, well, we're important. We we got our friends that want to talk to us online, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like, what am I doing? Yeah, so no, I, yesterday I took the kids and I got home and I said, hey, we're gonna go to the park, and I got a bunch of pushback. Oh, we don't want to go to the park. It's so different from when we were kids. Right? I know, right? Yeah. Be, be and my kid. daughter, I don't want to go. It's hot. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and so I, at first I feel like a jerk for forcing them. And, yeah. I, and I also feel resentful. Like, fine, I'm not going to do anything with you. So I, you know what? I'm going to do it. They're going to come with me whether they like it or not. So I took them. And it took a good, no joke, 15 to 30 minutes before them yeah. to even loosen it's like, up. It's like decompressing. And then we had fun. Yeah. Always. Same it takes with like my 15 kids. to 30. First they complain. They don't want to do it. But about 15 to 30 minutes later, we're throwing the Frisbee. got to go, man. The, Yeah, so. Next question is from D Bear 27 What's the biggest lesson you guys learned from your fathers? Oh, that's oh, a good one. Another father question. You know, I was with my, uh, my dad. My parents actually ate over last night. And um, I, I always, I consciously try to do this in front of my kids. But I asked my father um, about what it was like when he grew up 
because I think context uh, is really important. And I've, ta- I've, I've said, I said this to Jessica, I, th- I said, I think the children of immigrants have uh, an advantage sometimes because they have the advantage of context, I, you know, which I had. I had the advantage of context because my father, he was very, in, in, rela- in comparison to me, very poor, far less opportunities, he left school at the age of nine because his family literally needed a nine-year-old to work in order to provide money, you know, uh, for the family. Um, and so I have them tell these stories to provide that context uh, for my, you know, for my kids so that they, my kids can realize what they have in front of them and what they can do with what they have in front of them rather than taking things for granted. Um, so my dad taught me a lot of lessons. He was always there for his family. So we had dinner together every single night. He, he worked his butt off, never complained. My dad must have worked seven days a week for years or decades, he, you know, seven days a week. But he came home four or five o'clock and we would all have dinner together. We also planned uh, trips, even when, you know, you know, he was supporting a family of six uh, in, you know, in the Bay Area. He was able to provide us with a middle class, uh, you, know, uh, you know, lifestyle. Um, but it, didn't, it meant we couldn't afford expensive vacations. So, so we do inexpensive things. We'd go camping or we'd go you know, somewhere nearby that we could drive to. But I never noticed that it was, you know, I always, I always saw that it was a good time and, and he was super mm-hmm. involved. But the biggest lesson I learned from my dad was that lesson of context, that he, he under, you know, I understood what I had uh, m- because I knew what it was like for him growing up and I saw his attitude about things. I saw that he always took personal responsibility. He never um, you know, w- complained about working hard. He always did it. He always, uh, w- you know, was uh, it, family was very important to him. He talked about what it was like growing up uh, when he grew up in Sicily. And so that context, I think, is what has kept me grounded because it's really easy to take things for granted when you have a lot of stuff around you. It's really easy for you to start to expect things uh, to happen. So I think that's one of the better lessons that I got. Yeah, I think, I mean, the main thing that I can think of immediately is just the the integrity of of my father and, and how um, it's just impenetrable. He he strongly has beliefs and moral values that are super consistent and uh, is is willing to still be friends and have conversations with people that completely don't. Uh, abide by these uh, standards he has for himself and his family, but uh, stays very consistent to his uh, belief system. And I mean, that was a big thing for me to just, because I tested it all the time as a kid and I was trying to poke holes in it and, um, and he never varied from it. And I mean, I, (laughs) I, I was that kid that was always trying to push the limits of, well, I don't agree with you. I can have tattoos, you know, I'm not going to hell or, you know, whatever it was at the, at the time that I found, um, you know, I had issues with because I was, I was that kid that was searching like, well, why, why do you know, you believe this? Why do you think that way? And, uh, he, he was just always very, um, thoughtful in his response and very consistent, uh, with, uh, his belief system. And so, uh, to this day, like that's, I tried my best to be like that and, uh, to treat people the way he's treated people to where he stays calm, even in the midst of, uh, these arguments and, and, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of too, I was shielded a lot from a lot of really like, like we were poor in certain instances that like, I didn't even realize we were poor, you know, like we have all these stories of like being down and out. And like you said, like going camping, like, dude, there was always things we were doing, but they were on a very low budget, but I didn't know our financial situation. I didn't know, uh, you know, the turmoil amidst the family that was like really negative at the time. Like it was just, it wasn't something I, I needed to uh, dwell on as a kid and he didn't uh, bring that 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 wasn't even a discussion until I find these things out way later as an adult uh, why like all these things were happening and so anyway that's just some things that I I I reflect on that I was very thankful that uh, you know uh, he handled it the way he did but did you have a horse 
but I didn't have a horse. <laughs> I, didn't have so, a horse. <laughs> I didn't have a horse. Uh, I uh, yeah, I wish I had a horse. Yeah. That would have been, been money. Overrated, dude. Yeah. Overrated. <laughs> Dinners are way cooler. Oh, man. <laughs> Could have just galloped <laughs> anywhere. Electricity you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, right? Electricity is way cooler. Could have fed him some hay. You know. <laughs> Uh, by the bay. Uh, so, um, well, I guess I guess what I learned um, from mine is is to be there, right? So my dad took his life when I was seven years old, um, so it wasn't obviously around. And that's also why I waited so long to have uh, Maximus is because um, I also, because of uh, how we grew up, I was extremely motivated to, to have things, to have success, financial success, and to um, have security there and <clears throat> be able to provide for my family and not have to worry about that. And I was really nervous in my 20s if I were to ever consider having a kid that young that I hadn't reached that point. And I, and I had already learned at a pretty young age what it was going to take to make really good money. Like anybody that I had talked to that had mentored me or that was very successful <clears throat> literally dedicated a lot of, of most of their life to uh, trying to become financially successful. I mean, just the, the amount of work that it took. And so I had this really, you know, crazy challenge or, or, or uh, you know, thing that I wrestled with in my brain is, okay, yeah, I do believe I want to have a son one day and I do want to make sure that I'm every bit there for him because I didn't have a father figure really in my life. And so I want to experience all that. And I definitely don't want to have a kid during the time. But then I had this other thing where I was like, man, I really, really want to be successful. And I know that it takes, you know, long hours and, and sacrifice and, constantly being buried into whatever this this career is and so I wrestled with that for a very long time and uh, feel very blessed that uh, you know have found uh, what we have found now and built what we've built because it has created this ability for me to not miss out on anything that Max is going through and I'm I'm, I'm very cognizant of every milestone and uh, every moment that I can be a part of because I know I didn't get that so you know, it's a it's a sad lesson because I didn't have it, but it's I'm also grateful for that because it's it's that it's on the top of mind for me all the time. It's not like, you know, I know that some I'm sure there's a lot of fathers out there that you know look at providing for their kids is like, hey, I'm I'm being a great dad, I'm providing, and I think that you are a great dad if you're providing for your family. But I also think there's another part that is really really important on how you mold and raise raise your kid and being a part of their family. And I'm I feel blessed that. I'm now in a position where I can do both, but I'm constantly thinking about uh, all the things that I didn't get to do, all the things that I, I I didn't have or missed out on by not having a father figure, and that I don't ever I I feel like I have an opportunity to live relive all that what I missed through my son, and so I feel like I'm not gonna miss out on that because I'm very aware that I didn't get it, so I'm very determined to make sure that I'm a part of all of it. Mm. Cool, very cool. Um, look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Uh, you can check us out on YouTube. Um, it's Mind Pump Podcast. Also, we have a lot of free guides uh, designed to help you with your fitness goals. You can find all of these guides at mindpumpfree.com. And then finally, if you want to find us on social media, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. You can hey. find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. 